Hello, I'm Professor Scott Norman at Pittsburgh State University in our main automotive technology lab. Today we're going to show you how to use your AC gauges to diagnose a weak or faulty air conditioning compressor. Today in the shop it is 66 degrees with 22 percent humidity. Not a great day to work on air conditioning but we're going to be able to see the effects of a, a bad compressor. So if you take a look at your gauges right now, you take a look at them, the, um, the low side gauge is uh is about 71 72 psi and the high side gauge is about 71 or 72 psi this is a 1234 yf system and right now the ac is not on so if you ever see your gauge readings for both the low side and the high side are exactly the same you're going to want to do a visual inspection and take a look down to clutch and see if the clutch is energized because if the clutch is energized then you're going to get the exact same readings on both sides so we're going to go turn the AC on and then we're going to take a look at our readings. I have currently hooked up to the compressor the, um, the uh, EVDC100. So it's a, a tool that you can hook up to a variable displacement compressor to the solenoid itself and you can control the amount of a duty cycle. So you can turn it on maximum or you can turn it on minimum to see if the compressor is physically working. Sometimes you uh, turn on the air conditioning and, and, the, um, and the clutch is engaged, but the, um, but the verbal displacement compressor um, is not uh, uh, changing duty cycle, uh, the actual solenoid itself. And so you can go in there with the scan tool and you can try to activate the scan tool, but if it still doesn't come on, it's, 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 it's kind of hard to tell if it's a wiring problem, if it's a controller problem, uh, if it's a solenoid problem with the compressor or if it's the, um, the actual uh, wobble plate in the compressor not varying giving you that verbal displacement. So I can hook this tool up directly to the compressor to see if the compressor is actually functioning or not. So right now we have the system on maximum duty cycle. So I, if I have it on maximum duty cycle, it looks like my uh, gauge readings are about 30 PSI on the low and probably about maybe 190 or so on the high. So, so right now my engine is not fully warmed up, uh, but the system is, uh, is, uh, is uh, pumping uh, refrigerant. I can feel my discharge line, I can feel my suction line, I can feel my liquid line, and, and I can feel that, that there's a change in temperature in there. And so I'm getting good results with my, um, with my uh, system. Uh, right now I'm probably blowing about uh, 30 degree air coming out of the dash. So the system does not have any freeze up control right now because I am physically controlling the compressor. So what I have right here is I have my, uh, my special tool and right now it's on maximum displacement and I'm gonna turn it down to a minimum displacement. As soon as I can do that, you can see that my gauges start to change. And so what this is signifying is a weak compressor. Uh, the variable displacement of the compressor, uh, the actual wobble plate is going more towards it like a straight up position. So the stroke of the pistons are a lot shorter and it's signifying what a weak compressor would look like if it's not able to pump a lot of refrigerant. And so right now I'm taking a look at it and, and looking at my gauge readings and it looks like uh, 30, 40. So I'm looking at around almost 50 PSI on my uh, low side and, and then my high side went down below 100. Again, signifying a weak compressor. So what we're looking at is our gauge readings are showing that the low side reading is actually higher than normal and the high side reading is lower than normal. So again, they're reading opposite of each other. And so remember that on the low side gauge, we're looking at a, a, a probably around maybe 20 to 40%, uh, 20 to 40 PSI on the low side. And on a fully warmed up engine, I'm looking at at least 150 degrees on a 66 degree day. If it was an 80 degree day, I'll look at maybe around 200. If it was, you know, 90 degree day, could be up as high as 300. So I typically tell the, our students that, you know, we're between 150 and 350 PSI on the high side, depending upon the ambient temperature. And so, so we're not seeing that. Uh, we're seeing that the gauge readings are very close to each other. Again, we're looking up, um, uh, we're almost close to about uh, 70 PSI over here on the low side. I'm gonna turn on the duty cycle to give it just a little bit more duty cycle on it. And I'll be able to see my gauge readings are showing better readings, but not perfect by any means. Again, signifying a weak compressor. So anytime that the gauge readings are showing low on the high side, up over here on this side, or high on the low side, it could be a bad compressor. 
But it could also be some other problems too. For example, if your manifold valves are left open, so we're gonna open up these manifold valves <laughs> to where they're left open. I have seen students do that. This is something that um, a, a novice technician may do by accident. You know, these gauge readings are reading almost the same. They, they do read a little bit different because, and I, I can actually see in my little sight glass right here that there is refrigerant going through there. And, and so, so obviously that's bad. And so you don't wanna have these gauges, uh, uh, the actual manifold valves open while the, um, while the vehicle is running, because again, your gauge readings are all out of whack. The, the low side is very high, which is an indicator that there's a problem, right? So if you see a situation where the, uh, that the low side is very high, the high side is actually reading, you know, a little low, but not terrible. Well, check your manifold valves, make sure they're closed. <laughs> you know, that's, a, that's an easy thing to do. But again, I can see my side glass right here. I don't see any refrigerant flowing through there anymore. The third thing that could be causing the problem, besides a, a compressor not working, besides your manifold valves not working, is the restriction in the system. So if the TXV is stuck open, or the orifice tube is not even there, you're gonna get a very similar situation right here, where your, uh, your uh, low side is reading high, and your high side is reading low. So when you start looking at possible problems with this, you can say, well, the, the compressor is not even on, the clutch isn't on. If the clutch is not on, or if the clutch is on, it could still be a weak compressor. That's two. <laughs> Three is that your manifold valves could be left open, so obviously check those, make sure those are closed. And the fourth thing is that it could be a, a stuck open TXV or an orifice tube problem where the orifice tube just, just is not even there. So again, I have other videos that show you how to diagnose a TXV or an orifice tube problem that I would recommend watching if you want to look at uh, diagnosing that. I would always go after a TXV or an orifice tube problem first, you know, make sure that those are working properly before I go in there and actually um, replace a compressor. So one more look at the pressures. So again, we're at maximum displacement right now and we're at right around 30 PSI and around on the low side and 200 PSI on the high side. So again, I have very good pumping. I'm at my maximum displacement for my compressor with my uh, variable displacement solenoid. Now that solenoid is around uh, 10 ohms. So again, if the solenoid goes shorted, the solenoid goes open, this is not gonna work at all. If there's a mechanical problem with the compressor where that actual uh, wobble plate in there, some people call it a swash plate, some people call it a, uh, um, a, a wobble plate, but this is a single acting and I'm going off of the wobble plate term that are used in our uh, air conditioning textbook. So that wobble plate, if the wobble plate physically, mechanically can't move, to change the displacement of the um, uh, uh, of the compressor, then again, then you're not going to get a change on there whatsoever. So we're at maximum displacement right now, and so again, I'm getting very good pumping. I check the thermometer uh, in the dash, and I'm and I'm blowing out a little bit over 30 de 30 uh, degrees, so maybe you know 31, 32 degrees. So again, very good um, uh, cooling, but again, it's not the controller is not able to, to turn this off. If, if the PCM was in control and, and if the evaporator did get, you know, below 32 degrees, you know, freeze up conditions, it would start uh, raising up the duty cycle of the solenoid to try to uh, control that. And so I'm gonna now turn my solenoid to minimum displacement, we'll call that. And we're gonna let our gauges um, uh, equalize a little bit. And so when I checked this earlier, we're blowing out about 65 degree air uh, when we're at minimum displacement right now. So again, you virtually get uh, no cooling at all. 66 in here, blowing out 65 degree air, you know, that's not very good cooling at all. I'm gonna put my glasses on this time to make sure I get some good readings here. So we're looking at about a little bit under 50 PSI on the low side and about 90 PSI on the high side right now. So again, not very good pumping at all. So if you see your gauge is reading looking like this, it could be that you're at minimum displacement. The key is, is that if you see your gauge readings like this, okay, okay, it's not cooling very well. One of the big things with a variable displacement compressor is that you need to hook up your scan tool and you need to check to see what the displacement of the, um, of the compressor is. If the compressor is at a displacement of, let's say, 20%, well, that's what I would expect the gauge readings are. If, if the compressor displacement, I'm sorry, if the duty cycle of the compressor is at 86%,
And if I still see these readings, then I got a problem, you know? It's, it's, it. it's trying to get maximum displacement, but it can't do it for some reason. Again, it could be a, a mechanical problem with the compressor. It could be a solenoid problem. It could be a wiring problem. It could be just that you have low refrigerant. So the key is that anytime I'm dealing with a variable displacement compressor, I want to be able to look at the um, hook up the scan tool and look at the duty cycle to make sure that the duty cycle matches the gauge readings. Okay, if my gauge readings are reading normal, you know, what I'll call normal gauge readings, you know, the low side around 30, you know, the high side around 200 when it's only 66 degrees outside, you know, I still am going to hook up my scan tool because I want to look at my duty cycle to see what it is. Is is my AC maxed out right now at 86%? Well, on a 66 degree day, it should not be maxed out. So maybe it's at 40%, maybe it's at 30%. You know, I wanna see where it's at to, to make sure that the duty cycle is making sense to the environmental conditions. You know, if it's a real hot or a real cold day, also making sure that they make sense to the gauge readings also. If you're not sure if you have a variable displacement compressor or not, then it's best to do a visual inspection. So when I look at the compressor, <laughs> what's gonna happen is that uh, if you have a, um, a variable displacement compressor, it's gonna be a, a single acting compressor where, where the pistons are in the back, this is the head for the compressor, and then up here on front is where the wobble plate is, or the wobble chamber. So this compressor right here is a clutchless design, but it could be a clutchless design or a clutch design, it doesn't matter. But what I'm really looking at is I'm gonna look at the back of the compressor because that's where the head is at, because that's where the valves are at, and I'm looking for a solenoid right here. So if I take a look inside this right here, I can see how there's a solenoid inside there, it's gonna be a two-wire solenoid. If you ohm it out, if it's 10 ohms, you know it's a, um, a solenoid. The older uh, compressors had maybe a high pressure switch in here. And so if you open out the high pressure cutoff switch, well, that's gonna g give you very, very lo low resistance because it should be closed when you're under, I don't know, 425 PSI or something like that. So again, I'm looking for a valve, a solenoid, that's a, probably a solenoid is the best way to say that. Solenoid is in the back, it's a two wire solenoid. And, and if you're not sure if it's a solenoid or a pressure switch, you could open it out because the solenoid, again, is gonna be a higher resistance. It's gonna be around 10 ohms. I have a second compressor here. This one does have a clutch on it. So again, you got the hub up in front, you got the pulley there. But again, same type of compressor. It is a, a coaxial, uh, single acting compressor. You know, I call that a wobble plate design. So um, on this one right here, I see the solenoid in the very back, so I can kind of look at the end of it. That's where the head is at. I can see that there's, you know, that's a pretty substantial uh, bore in that for a solenoid. But again, if I ohm out that solenoid, it's around 10, ohm, two, 10 ohms, sorry about that. So again, so I could tell by visual inspection on the back of it, it has a solenoid on it. So this is also a variable style compressor. This is Professor Scott Norman. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like more automotive educational videos, please subscribe to my Professor Pentine YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Have a good day.